So this is intended to be a quick start guide to hatching in EasyCAD 2. So hatching is essentially filling in an object you've created on the screen. So we're going to do that with a bunch of lines and I'm going to try to use examples whenever possible. So let's put an object on the screen. So let's draw a rectangle and let's size that to 10 by 10 millimeters. Click apply. Let's put that to the center. So I'm going to click this little button here. It'll send it to the center of the workspace and hopefully the center of our marking field as well. Um, we're going to click this little hatch button right here, this big H. That gives us a bunch of options of how to fill in our object. So first we can start with mark contour. That's going to say, do you want to mark the outside line of this shape or not? Um, this thing next to it is going to say, what order do you want to mark the hatch in, which is the fill lines or the outside contour? If the one is inside the box, you're going to mark the hatch lines first and then the contour second. If it's outside, you are going to mark the contour first and then the hatch lines second. If it's unchecked, you're not going to mark the outside line at all. So we have three different hatches here, hatch one, hatch two, and hatch three. They are all independent of each other. They all have the same options for settings. You can use one, you can use two, you can use three, you can use all of them. But the key thing to remember is that if this enable box is checked, that means that hatch is active. If it's unchecked, it's not active. So for two and three were not enabled, those will not happen. So let's focus on one for the moment. So this enable button is gonna say the hatch is going to happen. And then there's another button here called all calc. What that's going to do, I'll demonstrate this just by showing it on the screen. Let's draw a circle and let's put it right above, sort of up into the left. I'm going to click this A button here so we can resize everything to fit our screen. So you can see we have a circle and a square. So I'm going to select both objects. You can see they're both selected in the object list. And I'm going to click the H up on the top menu for hatch. I've got all calc selected. I'm going to change this just so it's simple to see. I'm going to change it to something massive like one millimeter, but you can ignore the numbers for a moment. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see that there's a line here and there's a line here and immediately following that line parallel is or collinear is another line and same down here same down here same right here all it's doing is saying it's going to solve the object as intelligently as possible so it's going to make as few moves as it possibly can if it if the laser is already right here marking this line it's just going to turn off then turn back on and continue marking now if i didn't do that so let's undo that select our objects, go back to hatch, uncheck all calc, say OK. Now you can see our lines do not line up. It's calculating each one independently, so it's going to mark the objects as they appear on the screen or in the object list. So in theory it should be a little bit faster if you click all calc when you're marking. Now in something like this it's it's a second, a fraction of a second, I don't know. It's very fast, it's pointless to worry about it. But that's an explanation of it, that's essentially how it works. So let's move on. I'm gonna get rid of the circle, go back to the square, and put it back to the origin, make sure I'm zoomed to fit. Okay, let's go back to hatch. And we have all calc selected, we have enable selected. Now there's an option right below that that says follow edge once. This does not mean mark contour like this top uh, selection does. This means it's actually going to follow around your hatching instead of the outside contour of your object. So if you're hatching only something inside of your, your object and you can choose those settings down here, I haven't used those personally, but it's available, then you can choose to just follow the edge of your hatching. So that's an option, you can do it. It's fairly self-explanatory. Now, crosshatch means that you're going to do hatching spaced out at a certain distance, and you're also going to do something 90 degrees to that hatching. So essentially, right now, if you're at zero degrees angle, you're going to be marking along your x-axis, basically a flat line. And if crosshatch is selected, it's also going to generate a 90 degree line perpendicular to your x-axis. So I'm going to do that. It's going to generate the lines one millimeter apart. That's what line distance means. And you can see that show up in this square. So we have a checkerboard. Now, if we didn't do that, and notice on the left side of the screen, you have all your hatch settings here once you apply the hatch. So we can just work from the left side of the screen now. So if I unchecked crosshatch and I click this apply button, that's key. Anytime you make a change, you have to press apply. 
then we would just have our zero degree lines and that's it. So if I changed this angle to let's say 45 degrees and I applied it, we'd have our lines occurring at 45 degrees to the x-axis. If I chose crosshatch, we would add lines perpendicular to those 45 degree lines. Pretty simple. So you'll notice I have this little design to the right of these settings. What this does is it allows me to choose a pattern for the marking. So I don't recall what the default is. I think it may be this. And what this does is it says it's gonna mark from bottom to top, from left to right always. So these red lines you're seeing here are sort of like repositioning lines. They're not actual marking lines. The blue line is the actual mark. So it would occur like this, and then we'd start back over here and occur like that. And that, that would be our connection. We'd just be making a bunch of horizontal lines. So to demonstrate that, let's change our angle back to zero degrees. And let's get rid of the crosshatch. So you can see, so this pattern is called the bidirectional hatch. This is going to go from left to right, and then it's going to go from right to left. These red lines, again, just repositioning lines, no marking is being done. So that's the pattern that you're choosing here. It's going to be a little bit quicker in most cases than the previous pattern. Another option is the ring pattern. So it's going to start from the outer ring, and it's just going to move to an inner ring, smaller and smaller until it gets to the center. Another option is this zigzag hatch. It's sort of a two-way hatch, so it's gonna go r left to right, and then it's gonna make a connecting line to the next line. So this is actually marked, this little line here. And then it's gonna go right to left and then up and then right left to right. So simple enough to follow. Sometimes you may not want that outer line marked. And then this is for the same idea as the previous mark. It's gonna go left to right and include that connecting line but if it can't make the jump perfectly vertical or whatever angle you've selected, it'll have sort of a null value here and it'll be smart enough to say, I have to jump into the next line. I don't have to start over from the left side. I'll just continue at the next possible area I can. So I think that's a pretty good rundown of this. Now let's look at crosshatch. If we were to mark the crosshatch and we have to click apply, and I'm gonna continue going left to right just for the sake of simplicity. So I will light this, find a little more space on our aluminum, and click mark. So we marked the outer edge last again, and you can see we went from left to right. So if I change that angle to 45, and I click apply, and I find a little more space, on our aluminum and light that and I mark it same idea just at an angle easy enough now let's go back to zero degrees and let's get rid of our crosshatch so next to the angle box you have a pen box a pen, if you're used to milling, it's like a tool. You have multiple tools or multiple strategies for marking. So this doesn't have anything to do with the direction. It just changes your parameters for marking. So over here on the right side of the screen, we have 255 pens. So the default pen is going to be selected automatically. All you want to do here is choose that. You may have to uncheck this box if it's checked. And you also, depending on what version of EasyCAD you have, you may have to deselect everything on the screen. Make sure nothing is selected. So I'm going to click off of my square. So I'm going to choose this zero, and I'm going to make sure this is unchecked. So you can choose a number of loops, so that it'll run multiple times for whenever this pen is called. It's going to run as many times as this loop dictates. You're going to choose the speed of marking. Uh, you can choose a power setting for any particular pen that can run anywhere from 0 to 100 percent power. Frequency, that's going to be 20 kilohertz would be the least number of pulses and 80 would be the max. So let's go back to our square. So you can call up a pen for this hatch. Each hatch can only have one pen. Okay, one interesting quirk of the hatching is that there's a count here. So this is the number of times you want the, ca the hatch to occur. If you put a number in this box other than one, that's how many times this specific hatch, this hatch one, will occur. But if you put the number one in this box and press apply, 
which I didn't do. Put the number one in the box, press apply. Now it's going to either mark one time or it's going to go over to your pens and say, what pen are you calling up? Pen number one. It's going to mark three times. That's kind of an interesting quirk of the software. Let's just do a demo of that real quick. So I've got a bunch of things marked here already. So in EasyCAD, I've got pen number one set to mark at 10 loops total. And our hatch is set to one loop. So in this case, since this is one, it'll default to 10 loops on pen number one. Let's not do 10 loops though, let's do five. So that should be exactly what it does. It should do five loops if I mark it right now. Let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. I have to select that. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And our outer contour. Now, let's leave pen number one exactly the same. So see, it still says five loops, but let's go back to our hatch and let's change the count just to two and apply it. It's going to mark two times. It will respect what you put in this box only if it's something other than one. So if it's one and your pen also agrees that it's one, it'll mark once. If it's one and your pen says 10, it's going to mark 10 times. If it's two in the hatch and your pen says anything, it's going to mark two times. So basically, if you put one here, it's going to default to whatever the pen has. If you put some number other than one, it's going to mark that number. So if I put, let's say, two here, click apply, and let's notice that pen one, if I can make it over there, says five. It's going to mark two times then. Let's select it and let's mark it. And let's try not to do it right over top. Got a little bit of blank space left. So we're expecting to see two marks here. There's one. There's two. So that was two marks. That's how that works. The line distance is going to be the spacing between these lines. So if I put something very, very small, you would have a very, very tightly filled hatch. So 0 0.005 millimeters would be completely filled. So if I apply that, you can see it turned into a solid black square. Now that's going to take a lot longer to mark. Something like 0 0.05 might be fine, 0 0.01 might be fine. Depends on your material. It depends what kind of effect you're looking for. So for exp explanation purposes, one millimeter is a little bit easier to see. We can see each line individually. Now, since this is a 10 millimeter box, this next setting won't really be easy to explain. So we've got a one millimeter line distance selected here. So that means we have one millimeter between every single line we're marking. This average distribute line means each line is gonna have the same space between it. If I uncheck that, and I did something that wasn't an even amount. Since our box is 10 millimeters, it'll go in evenly. But if I choose 1.3 and I click apply, you can see that we don't necessarily have the same distribution. We have a small box on the top and a small box on the bottom. So for the settings at the bottom of the hatch, I'm gonna change this line distance to 0.05 millimeters, just so we can see the lines a little bit more easily. And I'm going to leave, I'm gonna uncheck average distribute line so edge offset means we're going to push our hatching inside of our outside contour by some, some amount. Let's say it's one millimeter. So I'll click apply, and you can see we have one millimeter of blank space surrounding our object inside the outer contour. I'm gonna change that back to zero. Start offset just means the hatching is going to start inside your contour. So let's say it's one millimeter inside. And remember, we're marking in this pattern from left to right, from bottom to top. So it's going to start one millimeter from the bottom. If I click apply, we should have a one millimeter gap at the bottom. If I change that back to zero, we'll go back to a full hatch. Same with the end offset. If I change that to one millimeter, we'll have a one millimeter blank space at the top. For the next setting, line reduction, that's how far you can overhang your outside contour. So if I had one millimeter here, you would see we're marking from left to right, so it's gonna be one millimeter inside the hatch. And for number of loops, that just includes a couple loops outside, or sorry, inside of your outside contour. 
And it's sort of like the ring strategy that we looked at up here, except it'll just apply the number of times you tell it to apply. So I'm gonna choose the regular pattern we've been using. I'm gonna put two loops, and you choose a loop distance as well. Let's just leave it at half a millimeter. Click apply, you can see we have half millimeter loops outside of our hatch before the hatch starts. Okay, this final setting in EasyCAD says auto-rotate angle. In theory, that sounds pretty self-explanatory. You would assume that it's going to mark at zero degrees for your first mark, and then you're going to have some subsequent mark that marks at 45 degrees. That's not exactly what happens. If you have the count set to more than one, and you have a number set here, and this is zero or any number, what it's gonna do is take this number, add it to your original angle, and then mark it once, and then mark it at one subsequent time. If you have this, set to let's say three, it's gonna mark this angle plus this angle three times. I can't explain that, that's what it does. I have EasyCAD version 2.14.10, maybe in a later version that works better, or maybe I just don't understand it, but I can really only share my experience. One thing that's probably good to notice here is that in this hatch I'm calling up pen number one. Now there's only one hatch listed here, so I'm calling up pen number one, and I do have mark contour selected. Notice that in the actual picture, pen number one, if we look at the pen parameters over here, is blue colored. So anything that's blue colored will be marked by pen one. Notice that the outer contour is black. That's going to be marked regardless of what your hatch settings say, because this applies strictly to the hatch. The selection of mark contour will strictly be applied to pen zero. So your outer contour is going to be marked by pen zero. It's black. That's what's going to happen. So if you get 90% power and you're expecting a very low power setting because you had called up penned one, that's why. Now if you specifically want to mark your outer contour with a different pen than pen zero or whatever you may want, different than your hatch, then you have to select that outside of the hatch. So what you would do is right now call it up with a different color. So use one of these, it's easy. Let's just say we want to use pen 3. So now you'll see that outer line is green. So that'll be marked with pen 3. Now we can hatch it and let's say we're going to hatch with pen 1. You can see our outer line is still green and our inner lines are going to be blue. So just keep that in mind. The mark contour does not apply to the pen you call up. It applies to whatever colors on the screen and that's kind of the easiest way to set it. Well thanks for watching and I hope this is going to be of some use to people just getting started with EasyCAD.